clearly were sending a very strong message. <laughs> I'm surprised the lights haven't been cut out here. <laughs> What, what government has, has uh, control over this, this particular I think what's quite interesting, though, I think where we're starting to meet in the middle here is that we both are recognizing that the future of money is one which makes the government more efficient, which hopefully leads to less government. Yeah. Think yeah, because I think we don't get what we pay for. I think we pay way too much for government, and we get much less back. Relative to what you, I mean, you pay to have it. Funny, in San Francisco, that would have gotten some booze. Um, <laughs> of course, San Francisco, of course, is the uh, homeless capital of the world now. So clearly, whatever they're doing is not working. Um, but um, I think, you know, when I, when I pay Apple Computer, you know, I feel like I'm paying kind of a high price for this thing. But I'm thinking, whoa, I'm never letting this go. This thing's fantastic. But if I'm paying the government for like filling potholes, they're not really getting filled. So I'm kind of wondering what I'm getting for that money. <laughs> and so I, I, I do feel like uh, we're better off paying businesses than we are paying government. I, I think we get a lot more value for the money we pay to businesses than the money we pay to governments. And a lot of what we pay to governments is for safety and security, and it was in this tribal mindset that we did it. We said, it's my tribe against your tribe, and so I'm going to protect my tribe. That's why, you know, big defense budget, and the wall, and, 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 uh, and the reason you're seeing all these tensions, the trade wars and the whatever, is the governments are trying to assert themselves again and say, no, no, we matter. No, you don't. But I'm not so sure that they matter as much as they used to. And another interesting thing, I recently interviewed Balaji, uh, ex Coinbase, A16Z, and he talked about a future of AI and um, uh, virtual worlds, whereby we're going to be increasingly expecting time virtual worlds similar to Ready Player One. I think we've all seen that, right? Yeah. Uh, and that is a reality that's coming. We will also be transacting most likely using Bitcoin in that world because we don't, that's going to break down the borders of uh, countries because we're going to be able to find our tribes who are like us online in these virtual worlds and that's going to make the borders of where we live irrelevant. I think uh, right. I think you're gonna you're gonna live where you want to live. Um, and and people will move if they feel that their government is overbearing or taxes are too high or the services they provide aren't good enough or whatever. Um, and the only things that governments now have to keep us in line you know, is defense and police. And I think that's not sustainable. I think at some point that turns into, if, if, if people don't... Uh, uh, we see it in Hong Kong. Right. I think people, if, if the leaders don't recognize this, uh, they're going to be overthrown. And that's going to happen across the board. And that, um, you know, that's scary for a lot of people, but um, for a lot of us, I'm sort of thinking uh, either the government start to recognize that they're in competition with each other for us, and they're, they are accountable to us the way a business is accountable to its customers, or they're going to be overthrown. Free market for government. I think there is going to be a free market for government. And that's where I think the world is headed. You know, because there are people who sort of say, oh, we should never have any government or nothing. Well, but government does provide these, these insurance services. I, I do believe that these borders become less and less relevant. Every time I fly somewhere, I think, hey, you know, there's a Starbucks here, I can use my Uber, I can do, it, it's pretty much the same wherever I go. It's, different landscape and maybe a few different old buildings, but, um, you know, it's interesting. People are living at a pretty good, unless they've got a very corrupt government, which, uh, when, if you go to the countries with a really corrupt government, those people are living in squalor. But the rest of them are living pretty much the same. 
And so you start thinking, well, wait a minute, why do we even have a border between us and China, for instance? Why do we have a border between us and Canada? Why do we have a border between us and Europe? Or, I mean, or, or Singapore, or Japan, or Korea, or whatever. I'm not so sure you really need those borders. And what are the customs people doing other than holding up progress? Uh, this is a really interesting time. This is one of those um, times that it, it's both really exciting for like people who are change agents, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, actually some some uh, media people, um, and then very scary for other people who, who don't like change and they want to make sure it stays the same as it always was. It's really interesting if you ask somebody who's sort of 35 and younger, would you rather have a Bitcoin or $8,300? They'll all take a Bitcoin. But if they're, they're 45 and over, <laughs> for me, um, <laughs> they, they will all take the dollars. They don't want to see any change. They, you know, as you get older, you, you get a little bit set in your way. You, ah, I'm not so sure I want to. What are these young whippersnappers talking about? And the young people are going, wait, Grandpa, you put us, you know, into student debt. You know, I, this is, I'm going for this new currency that's not my grandpa's currency. It's, you know, you, you put us into student debt, we come out into this world, we, you know, we owe $200,000 to the world somehow. I'm going for something else. I'm, I'm not into whatever you guys did to me. You know, yeah, sure, you got cheap drugs, but you, I didn't get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the interesting things you were talking about earlier was investing in the Bitcoin bank. You talked about paying people in Bitcoin, being paid in Bitcoin, almost like the circular Bitcoin economy, and at which point Bitcoin essentially becomes a universal account. The only other person I've heard talk about it like that is Trace Mayer. Um, for, for the future of money to to be Bitcoin and to be realized that we do need a circular economy. So what are the steps you think we, because we're not there yet, most of us are just hodling. Yeah, there are only a few, there are, well, of course you're going to hodl because, I mean, I predicted 250,000 in 2022 or 2023. I'm, I'm, thinking, you right. I'm pretty sure it's going that way. Um, so naturally people are going to hodl, but they, um, but the reason I'm saying it's not going to be until then is that you've got to have like open node or whatever making it easy for people to use it retail. Um, you're going to have to make it so that the governments are feeling like they're okay with it. Uh, and and the, I don't even think the governments have made any money on, on the capital gains tax that they've imposed on these cryptocurrencies. I, I actually think that that's maybe overall a wash. If they, if they instead do a little transaction tax, it might, it might change the whole nature of the business. It's an experiment for the governments that they kind of, kind of try a transaction tax, and it's an opportunity for all of us. If all we've got is tiny little transaction tax on Bitcoin, boom, everything's possible. We are now using a global currency. We are, um, everybody can use it. Micropayments are easy. The, uh, my business is simple. I don't pay nearly as much. If I pay my accounts, it's for good advice. It's not for accounting, you know, you know, getting a green eye shade out. If I'm paying my lawyer, it's for good advice. It's not for, uh, you know, what the deal was, because we know the deal is built into software and the smart contract. Uh, I think this is, uh, that is the direction I think that the world has to head because without a tax on it, um, those governments are going to be really resistant without some sort of tax. So they've got the capital gain tax on it. I think they should drop that in favor of just a little teeny transaction tax, like half of one percent. Tiny little transaction and see how it goes. I mean, the, the U.S. benefited hugely from the internet. Why? Because they left it alone. They just let it rip. And uh, and the U.S. is wants to leave this alone. I talked to the 
people in the SEC, and they, they want to leave it alone. They want this technology to happen, but they're they're a little afraid they will lose their tax base. Depends who you talk to in the SEC. Was it Jay Clayton or Mr. Hearst? Um, yeah, a couple of the people at the SEC, <laughs> uh, but but the ones who are in charge of uh, the ICO stuff. ICO stuff. stuff. Yeah, they've made it um, tough to do an ICO. You know, we've lost a lot of ground here, and I think the rest of the world has benefited. We, the U.S., has lost a lot of ground, and the rest of the world has benefited because um, we are, are getting a little too restrictive on the ICOs, and people are kind of coming down on those. That's a new technology. We should just let it rip and see what happens. It's, it's an exciting new technology. And then the other thing that we've lost is the airdrop. I think that airdrop is one of the coolest things ever for democratizing the world, for opening up new avenues for, for gifts. Imagine that you're in Venezuela, the place is falling apart, there is no currency. What if the U.S., instead of sending in whatever, whoever, whatever they sent in, food and guns, instead they just did a big Bitcoin airdrop on the country? All of a sudden, the country, they don't have to work in bolivars anymore. They don't have to work in a local currency that is, you know, completely worthless, really. You know, if I have a bolivar, the first thing I'm going to try to do is translate it into any currency. I'd rather have Nigerian Naira. I'd be, I'd be quick, I'll take your Naira. Um, but, but of course, they'd much rather have Bitcoin. And if you drop Bitcoin here, the U.S., instead of, like, sending in all of whatever they're sending in. If they just airdrop Bitcoin in there and made that the, the currency for that economy, then that economy could grow in spite of the military junta government that's, that's dictating what everybody's supposed to do. I, I mean, we, you and I, this is where we might differ because um, I think the US would do very well to ignore the ICO's focus on Bitcoin like the hair of the tortoise race me. That's where I would come from. And uh, I think it would be great to get to Bitcoin in places like Venezuela, but at the same time, it means they're going to have to keep the power going so they can have their phones charged and make sure everyone has a phone. Uh, there's some practicalities related to that. I'm conscious we are... we pay for that. I mean, people would pay. They would have Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin to pay for their power. They have Bitcoin to pay. Nobody's going to pay boulevards. <laughs> um, another, another thing, the U.S. gives out all this money in and half that money usually goes to the dictator, and a quarter of the money goes to his, you know, we can agree. his surrounding. And a quarter of the money might somehow make it to a power plant. Well, if you just did an airdrop, you said, hey, this country really needs an economy. You, you do an airdrop with Bitcoin. You, you actually end up with, you know, using one-tenth the amount of money, you end up with but where the economy really picks up and, and that that country thrives. So this is, you know, it is one of these times, and we have a vehicle now to really change the world, open the world up, make it, make it one big, amazing place. We've got about a minute and 20 seconds left. It's been fantastic to talk to you. We could go probably for a couple of hours here. Just as a final question, is there any of these not believers or the doubters? I mean, you don't, they're not on Bitcoin yet. They just, they just don't believe it. What's your final message to them? To the Dow? To the Doubters. Doubters? Doubters. or Doubters? The Doubters. Yeah. Oh, the Doubters. The Laggards. Oh, I was thinking the Doubters. And you were asking about, about stable coins. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Doubters are just... It, <laughs> yeah, I'm bored. This is where the future's going to be. I mean, you, you've, got, um, you've got an opportunity here to completely transform the world the way the... Renaissance did, the way the, the Iron Age did, the way um, the computer age did, and the internet did. This is, but this is even bigger because it transforms society to being one big open globe and a very good, solid, trusting open globe because you don't, you don't have people in the way. People create, like whenever you have a regulation, you, that is a a speed bump and, a, and an opportunity for corruption. Well, here, <laughs> it's all built into software. You, 
you know, you, it's there, it's, it's as trustworthy as the 200,000 computers are to trust to have the same answer. It's, and it's where we're all headed. So, you know, get on board. I, you know, I thought, I heard recently, this is weird, because <clears throat> I'd say um, about uh, uh, two out of five, about 40% of the entrepreneurs coming into my office are women. And the two first uh, ICOs we ever back were really two of the first ICOs, uh, Coin, uh, uh, Tezos and Bancor, were both women. Um, but then I just heard that it's something like 18 to one men to women with Bitcoin wallets. And I thought, come on, women, what are you thinking? This is so much better. You don't have to pay two and a half to four percent to the retailer. You you don't have the um, the problems that you all have with the banks. You don't have to write out all those checks. This is this is a this is your, a way better world than the world you're in. So get on board. Get some wallets. Get going. Uh, I think that is a, there's a message for you. All right. Well, let's say thank you to Tim. Now, we will welcome back to the stage Ted Ross, the CIO of the City of Los Angeles, who will be acting as our moderator for our block tank LA. Thank you.